Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO and this is Scary Scars Shared. In these interviews, I ask real project managers to share in around 10 minutes what they've learned from their most challenging project management experiences. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or the podcast. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by David Evans, who's going to share his experiences with us. Hi, David. I'd like you to start by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. So, uh, David Evans from CBRE. Um, I have been a project manager for 18 years. Um, I first got into project management of my building surveying course from university on the sandwich year where I went to Bristol, not really knowing uh, a lot about project management, took a sandwich year and the role wasn't building surveying, it was project management right. and they sort of threw me in at the deep end doing projects all around the country that I had no idea what I was doing. So it was very much a, a baptism of fire. Um, from there, I uh, then went back to the same company after university, did four or five years of project management on big, sexy industrial sheds um, <laughs> all over the country. Uh, and then uh, about 13 years ago, moved to London where I predominantly done um, project management, but for corporate occupiers across numerous sectors from concentrate on legal for one period of time, but across media, tech, finance, insurance, pharmaceuticals, uh, you name it, I've probably done something in that, in that sector. Um, varying in sizes from probably the smallest 5,000 square feet mm -hmm. up to about 250,000 square feet, um, but very much felt that the size didn't really matter in many respects. Right. It was the it was the same process. It just was elongated in the time it took to do that process. So, looking back over your project management career, can you um, think of an example of a scar, so something that went wrong on a project, or that was challenging, or what you learned from it? Uh, many, um, <laughs> but I've picked you one where, which I think best sort of sums up my experience and my way of project management. We'll call them Client A, uh, approached me to uh, undertake a relocation project, uh, very similar to what I'd been doing for, for most of my career. They found a building which all seemed great and was all doable, but like with everything, once you start negotiating with landlords and you look at the, uh, the scope, which often increases from when you first get a brief from a client, uh, it became quite clear that the landlord developing a Cat A scheme, uh, which would then roll into a tenant Cat B scheme, uh, was a bit of a recipe for disaster from both a timing perspective, um, but also a practical sense that having two contractors working on site um, would, would be an absolute disaster. Can you just explain what you mean by Cat A scheme, Cat B scheme? So a Cat A scheme is where a landlord would develop, uh, develop a building to a set level. So right. it generally gives you um, some lighting, some air conditioning, but based on a very broad footprint. It's not specific to any client. It's just generic. a general generic space. Uh, and then a Cat B would be where a tenant would come in and do their enhancements. So we then build meeting rooms, oh, right. all the open plan desking, um, comms rooms, kitchens, reception areas, all the spaces that make it habitable basically. So a custom layout on top of that Correct. basic schema, okay. Correct. I could actually see that this potentially would have a bigger risk at the end that we wouldn't be able to meet the programme and from experience of landlords delivering a lot of Cat A developments. Um, I felt very uneasy that we could end up in a situation where we wouldn't hit the dates and the lease extension would be executed and it would cost everyone a lot of money. Right. So we took the decision to put a uh, hold on the lease negotiations for a time. At this point I had to bring everyone round the table, uh, so it had the representing agents from both uh, landlord and tenants. It had all the legal advisors, it had both clients themselves, mm -hmm. client stakeholders uh, and key members of the professional team from both parties. So it was about a 25 person mm -hmm. meeting coming together um, to try and look at a um, Cat A, Cat B tenant delivered scheme as opposed to a 
CAT A, CAT B, landlord and tenant scheme. Right. Um, so that's the client doing the both the CAT A it, and the CAT B work. Correct, conjoined together. So we had a huge amount of work streams happening at the same time, going against everything the book ever tells you to do. Right. Uh, but it was in the interest of everybody to get us to a point where we could actually start to look at developing and delivering this project to the, the end date that the client had. So it was a, uh, a very difficult situation. The result of which we, we delivered the project on time, so we didn't incur all the um, loss or incur increased expense that the client would, would have incurred if they didn't hit their date. Um, we did go slightly over budget, but given when we started the project, we didn't really have any idea of what the budget may be. Uh, and we had a big lump of money from the cat A. So that was, I think, where we ended up going slightly over was probably quite a good situation. It mm -hmm. could have probably then gone a long worse uh, if we hadn't for them. Um, the client got, client got an amazing space, uh, incredibly happy. Um, they all moved in on time. They relocated, I think, lost three people in the relocation, which when you're talking of over a thousand people, uh, I think that's to be admired in terms of, of losing just three people just from a geographical perspective. So on the basis of that experience, um, what did you learn and what would you recommend to other people that they should do? I think, uh, as I said, I think the, the biggest thing was trying to understand where a client is coming from. I think that's one of the key things is actually you know, we, we were quite good at setting a process off from the beginning and telling a client this is how you should do it based right. on what we think. Actually, every client is different. They have different goals, different objectives, different drivers for a project. I think you really need to get under the skin of the client first to understand what they are and then set your stall out and put your program against that because uh, you know, quite often we are very brash and we think that we, we know everything and clients should do exactly what the PM says. And if they don't, they're, they're idiots because they've never done it before. Uh, and in many ways we are right, but I, think, uh, but I think really understanding what the biggest drivers for clients are and actually understanding and realizing what that means to them and doing your plan around them is probably the best way. I think, and that's where it goes back to that flexibility. You need to put something in place which allows you to be flexible uh, and sort of roll with the course of the project. I think having a fixed plan from day one, I would say 99% of the time, by the time you get to the end of the project, that program's never followed it through. So I think being flexible and adapt programs and, and way things roll through a project uh, was probably out of everything I've done was the biggest thing I took away. David, thanks for your time, your openness and your insights. So today we've heard from David about a particularly challenging project management experience, how he recovered from it and what he learned from it. My challenge to you is what can you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this interview, let me know by leaving a comment or a like or both or by sharing it with others on social media. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or the podcast. If enough people think these interviews are worthwhile, I'll make more of them. If you want to share your scars in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website, pragmaticpmo.com, or follow me on Twitter, at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell, Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for listening.